I want to take a few moments and discuss interoperability between Trimble Business Center and AutoCAD Civil 3D. So I set out to prove that I could take a project that was completed or created in Civil 3D, bring that into Business Center and do a takeoff report and even build a model with very little effort. So what you have here, what I have here, is, is a Civil 3D project. It's a corridor, it's got an intersection, it's got a couple corridors here and I wanted to bring this into uh, Business Center. Now, there's a couple key elements here to make this work and I'll discuss how we can bring this together later um, in the video, but the first key to this is proxy graphics. There's a variable called proxy graphics. We wanna have that set to one in the AutoCAD Civil 3D drawing, okay? The other thing is gets in a little bit deeper, which is the way that Civil 3D operates is it's using the settings and what are considered the styles. So the key ones here that I'm, I'm working with are feature line styles and code style sets. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close this project because I can't have the project open and bring it into Business Center. Um, Business Center basically tells me that that project's in use. So what I'm doing here is uh, just closing it. So you can see here that here's that project. I just, uh, just created it and I'm just gonna left click and drag and drop it into Business Center. So move our, my Explorer out of the way here. And it's gonna process the drawing. It's gonna bring it in. It's gonna give me a warning and some errors. Those are just layers or hash patterns that, um, that are pretty typical. I'm just gonna click no. And you can see the same project is now in Business Center. All right, so all the data is here. I don't get the boxes. That proxy graphics is what keeps, that, keeps me from getting the boxes. So I'm gonna go up here to uh, my uh, 3D view and I'm gonna rotate this up on the side and you can see the data and how what I have. So basically I got the cross sections which are from the assemblies and the sub-assemblies inside of uh, Civil 3D. But all the feature lines and line work are down here at uh, a 2D. Now, it's really not a problem and the key to this, like I said, is all in the coding and the way that Civil 3D was set up and layered. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my data prep tab and I'm gonna use this line feature we have, uh, intersecting lines feature. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna select by layer and I'm gonna choose this C row top. That is the links that are along the top of that section. And then I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna pick the lines and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pick all these lines here. Now I know I've done this a couple times so I kind of already know what lines I want to elevate so I'm just picking those by layer. And I'm gonna grab my sidewalk as well. And I'm going to click close and I'm going to click apply and what's going to do is going to elevate this data to the top or basically to 3D. So now it's all elevated to my uh, cross sections. Okay. So that's pretty much the only editing I need to do. You know the rest of it is just kind of configuring and setting things up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to split this into two views so you can see both and I'm gonna go up here and I'm just gonna click on this button here called Build Surfaces. So again, the other key to this is having Business Center set up to recognize the same layer configuration that's in the Civil 3D project. So just a matter of having two templates. So by doing that, you'll see that now I have a surface of my corridor. So again, depending on how far you wanna take this, I could do a quick takeoff report, which would give me a um, uh, cut fill from the finished design to the uh, original design. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do a surface slicer so you can see uh, what I'm talking about here. You can see I have two surfaces. I have my original ground and then there's my finished design surface of the corridor. But I want to take this a little bit further and the next step would be to uh, first I need to put a boundary. So I'm just going to do an edge boundary around my finished design and what that did was basically shrink wrap it. So you can see here if I go and I pick that edge boundary, it goes all the way around my site. So I'm gonna go over to take off and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna define my topsoil. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna say, okay, I've got, let's say 12 inches of topsoil to strip off. I'm gonna put that and store it as my onsite topsoil. And we'll go ahead and we'll add that because I already picked the boundary, all right? So that's the first thing. The next, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and come in here and I'm gonna define what are my site improvements. So I'm gonna click on this, identify site regions. I'm gonna click design, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna set this to, uh, we'll just create a new layer called site improvements. And I'll click 
close. And I'm going to come down here and we're going to start dropping in some information. Now you can see here the line work that we have has um, all been, uh, uh, it's orange, so it kind of shows what, where my boundaries are. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do the roads. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do this, uh, let's call it heavy duty pavement. And we're going to put make some heavy duty roads in here. And I'm going to call this, um, we'll call this what the road it is. So courthouse road. And I'll show you here when I pick on this is basically this improvement is made up of my heavy duty asphalt, some tack coat, uh, another asphalt layer, my aggregate base, and then a 95% sub base. And here's all my thicknesses. So depending on the road, I can go in here and I can adjust these thicknesses accordingly. But I'm gonna leave them the way there is. I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna drop in the road for that section. Now I can come over here and I could call this, we'll call this puller road and we'll come up and I'll drop that in there. Next, let's go ahead and just so we can identify this, let's go ahead and talk about, let's add the seed in and we're just gonna call this uh, seed areas and I'm gonna drop that in over here and as well as over here. So this is where my ditch is. So we're dropping that in. We're we'll gonna drop in the sidewalk as well. So again, I can be more defined. I can call this, you know, a courthouse. So when you see this in the report, I'll know where this material happens to be, right? So I can say uh, north, south, east, west, whatever, right? But I'm just gonna drop in this data here. Then I'm gonna come in and grab some sod. So we'll grab the sod. I'm just gonna say, cause we're gonna do some sod in the, um, in the boulevard here between the sidewalk and the top back of curb. So I'm just go ahead and I'm just picking in between those and it's filling that in. Okay. Now the last piece is we'll do the gutter. So I've broken the gutter up into two spots, um, not necessarily for the volume of the concrete of the gutter, I'm gonna show you where that comes from, but more so of just to get my subgrade. So um, because I've got two different adjustments, I'm gonna do a curb gutter and I'm just gonna call this gutter. And again, it's just for an estimate. So I'm gonna drop in my gutter here and we'll drop in the gutter here and we'll drop in the gutter here and then I'm just going to use the I call it curbing back and I'm just going to call it curbing as well and that's just going to be this top back here and as well as here as well as here and close and then I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, rebuild my surfaces again and what it's going to do is it's going to create my subgrade surfaces. It's going to adjust uh, from my topsoil. It's going to basically take and create a topsoil surface. It's going to create all my materials and all my volumes. You can see it even renders and shades. If I come over to my section view here and I turn on my original ground with topsoil and then let's go ahead and do the um, subgrade adjusted you can see now I've got a subgrade surface which is the white my topsoil is the orange my original ground and then my finish design being up top so now that I have that the next step would be to just simply come over and do a takeoff report so I'm gonna click on takeoff report I set uh, some settings here to turn on uh, the costing and everything um, so we'll click, click OK to that. I'm going to assign or also choose mass earthwork analysis, topsoil hand, handling, and set up for my shrinkage and, and bulkage. And I'm going to click OK. Now, this is going to take a couple minutes to process the report. It rebuilds all the surfaces, does all the calculations, and I'm going to get a report here in just a second. So you can see it's loading the uh, report. Um, so while the report's loading, a uh, couple things is that uh, the template that you can set up, it, there's a lot of different ways we can achieve this. DOTs have standards. If the DOT uh, set up the standards uh, accordingly and you match that standard to your business center template, then you can achieve the results that I'm, I'm doing here. So it's not anything that's programmed. It's, it's just a matter of mapping things together. So Theoretically, technically, we have the capability to take a project from Civil 3D into Business Center, do a takeoff report here in a matter of minutes, as well as now that model is, even though I, I haven't enhanced it yet, 
it's in a format where I can turn it quickly into a constructible model without doing a lot of work, without doing a lot of editing. So um, the data is there, it's just understanding how to uh, mess with it. So here's the report, it's a 15 page report. Um, as I go through, you can see I'm getting uh, all my earthwork information, my you know compacted fills and my deficit, how much I need to borrow. Uh, I can do stuff now that I have this into a format in Business Center. I can do my really some good mass hall analysis on it. Um, I can go pretty deep with the information. You can see here, here's all the report. Um, as I scroll down, it's showing you all the topsoil stripped in one big lengthy report. Um, each area, even the cost, you know, how much it's going to cost me to cover that area plus, you know, if a bag is, you know, uh, $50 per bag, how many bags is it going to take to cover that? Um, looks like I'm missing uh, some information as far as uh, uh, that conversion, but the data is the data's there. All right, so you can see here even, you know, tack coat, uh, a lot of information here. Here's where I was talking about, like, on the uh, VDOT curb and gutter. That basically what Business Center does, it takes the line that represents the curb and gutter, and there's my total length of that line, and I can put a bid price on it. Now, as I scroll down, you can see here, here's the actual volume because it knows what the cross-sectional area is of that CG6 in this case and how much uh, material volume of concrete I'm going to need uh, for that length of concrete or that length of curb and gutter. So again, I didn't have to do anything special. I didn't have to sit there and count, uh, run into an Excel spreadsheet. This table can actually be saved out as an Excel spreadsheet or uh, a PDF Word document. Uh, so again, the, the goal here was to prove that I could take a civil 3D drawing. This isn't even the Linux ML file. If I got the Linux ML file of the alignment, um, I could bring that in. But I wanted to go just from an AutoCAD civil 3D drawing, DWG file. One drawing, brought it in, and you can see how quickly I have a, uh, a surface of that, in, that road network, those two corridors. So again, I can expand on this. I can add more data, more content. Um, but it is definitely doable um, and it takes little effort again the effort is just the way that um, the styles are set up in AutoCAD Civil 3D and that's really not that much work there's really only a couple key pieces that need to be configured and it's really just mapping the layers so when the layers come into Business Center um, I'm using those layers to build my surfaces and categorize my data and apply my site improvements um, so that's really it that's what it takes so um, what we can do here is we can you know, basically just marry up a civil 3d template with a uh, business center template and uh, we would be able to achieve, achieve this type of success so uh, this is a shameless plug I'm actually this is a preview of what I'm going to talk about at Trimble Dimensions this year which is coming up next month so if you get the opportunity it'd be a good conference a user conference to come out to um, I have a class on understanding CAD data and I'm going to be talking about this interoperability of going from Civil 3D uh, to Business Center and how data translates through and how to manipulate it. And of course getting into showing you how to do data prep and other uh, features. In addition to that, uh, all my recordings besides this and all my tips and stuff, you can find those in the Trimble library. So to get to the Trimble library, you can download the app from Google or iTunes. It's just Trimble library or you can go to tremble.retrieve.com and create a user account and you'll see that you'll have access to a ton of videos uh, which are known as, and they're organized and formatted into what are called K-Apps and there's a, a store where you can add what titles you want but all that information is there and it's very powerful uh, use of knowledge that you can uh, get your hands on. So uh, you can also reach out to your local SciTech. They are your Trimble a dealer and especially on the civil engineering construction side and they'll be able to help you get your knowledge more information get your training and even show you how to uh, get a hold of the business center so uh, with that I uh, hope this was helpful if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact us